Hello and welcome. I am Vera Urubo. I am so happy that you're watching and you are telling your friends about this channel and sharing the video. That's very important. But you see, I'd like you to subscribe. If you have not yet subscribed or if this is your first time of coming on to this channel, please subscribe and then tell your friends about this video this channel because you see if there's something god wants to do right now is that he wants to quicken his people and it is content like this that god uses to cause people to come alive spiritually so in sharing this video you are actually doing god's work okay so thank you for doing that today i want us to look at what to do when it appears as if god is missing <laughs> have you ever been in that place where you don't seem to be able to find God. I mean, uh, for some people, you say, I don't feel like I used to feel. For some people, that sense of God is just gone. And you are checking yourself. I, I know sin. I don't do wrong thing. But I just can't seem to find the presence of God. Okay, I'll explain to you what is happening. You know, our journey with God is actually designed to be extraordinary. It's not a boring journey at all, okay? And in this extraordinary journey, it's important that you begin to learn how the Spirit of God helps us, guides us, leads us into a deeper place in our walk with God. There is a passage in Luke chapter 5, verse 34. You know, prior to this uh, verse, they were asking Jesus, how come the disciples of the fire receive fast, your disciples don't fast? And Jesus gave an answer. So Jesus responded, this is Luke 5, 34. Jesus responded, do wedding guests fast while celebrating with the groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Someday the groom will be taken away from them. You know, especially when you are just newly converted. Sometimes what the Lord does is to just envelop you in this sense of his presence because you know you are new to these things, right? And so you're walking in that. And as a, a newborn Christian, sometimes you now begin to uh, depend on that feeling. But God never wants us to follow him by feelings. God wants us to follow him by faith, not by how we feel. So God is with you whether you feel like he's with you or he's not with you if you are a child of God. But now, from this passage, Jesus said, a time comes when the groom deliberately withdraws himself. And in my journey with God in almost four decades, one of the things I've discovered is that anytime God wants to bring me to a deeper place in my work with him, there is, as it were, like a withdrawal of his presence. It's not as if God is no longer there, but you just don't have that, you know, immediate sense. And what do you do in those times? I'll tell you three or four things you can do, which uh, I, I believe that will actually be very, very helpful to actually moving you from the level where you are with God to a, a new level where God actually is taking you. All right. Now, what do you do? Number one. Take time for deep praying and watchings in the spirit. Now, you see, God always likes to woo our, our, our attention. He wants us to spend time with him. So when you are beginning to have that sense that, oh, God is no longer the way you used to experience him, take time. Sometimes you may even take a retreat, a spiritual retreat, okay, where it's just you and God. Deep praying and watchings in the spirit. Now, this type of praying, you are not going there to ask for, uh, I need uh, bread or I need butter. I, no, no, no. You are going there and what, what you do in this type of season is actually praying, prayer of consecration. Okay? And you are just uh, uh, yielding yourself again to God and you are telling him how much he means to you and how that all that you desire is to live for him. All right, so deep praying and watches in the spirit. In Isaiah 6 verse 3, the Bible says, 
Oh, that we might know the Lord. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of the dawn or the coming of rains in the early spring. Okay, King James says, let us follow on to know the Lord. Okay, so this is NLT. He says, he will respond to us when we come and press on to know him. So God is always eager for those seasons. So I want to ask before I go to point number two, when was the last time you took a spiritual retreat? Uh -huh. That's what God wants to do. He wants you to come. God is desirous for you to come. And anytime you come, you can be assured of a glad reception. So that's the first thing to do. Then number two, you have to do this alone. So this is stemming from number one. So you take quality time to be alone with God. Take quality time to be alone with God. So in this season, you are not calling a prayer partner. <laughs> you are not calling for prayer band. It's just you and God. Just be alone with him. And you'll find this a lot in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many times after a massive crusade, after a miracle uh, um, crusade, the next thing he will say, he dispatches his, um, his disciples and then he alone goes into the mountain to pray. There's something about being alone with God. And that's something you need to learn. Then number three is learn to be quiet in his presence. Now, in, 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 in Psalm 46, verse 10, the Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes eh, we don't know how to be still. We talk too much. The whole prayer is supposed to be a two-way communication. But we get in there, it's only us talking, talking, talking. You need to get to the point where you learn to be quiet. And this quiet is both physical and inward as well. You might be in a very quiet place. Everywhere is quiet, but you are not quiet on the inside. Okay, so that inner quietness is the one that is very, very crucial at this time. Okay, where inside you are still. You are not in the presence of God and you are thinking, oh, that magic cube. Ay, that a bowl of soup. You see, you, you know, you can't, that's not that, what to do. So you want to be quiet, not just having a quiet outside but learning to be quiet on the inside for some people this takes a while because they've not learned it but once you begin to learn to be quiet on the inside it becomes easier for you to just uh, get into that experience where as you come into the place of prayer you're already quiet and then you just begin to flow so you learn to be quiet habakkuk 2 20 says the lord is in his holy temple let the earth be quiet be still before him you know learning to be still before god eh, is actually also a sign of reverence i have seen that one thing about this generation is the fact that many people just don't know the reverence of God, just being in his presence reverentially, just that reverence, quiet, and waiting for him to speak. This is so important. And then um, in being there, number four, learn to minister to the Lord. In Acts chapter 13, in verses 1 and 2, the Bible says they were in the church that was in Antioch, all of those guys, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So you can add fasting to this time. In fact, fasting will actually be very, very good. And about fasting, I normally say, many times people pamper themselves into irrelevance in this kingdom. They pamper themselves into spiritual weakness. Fasting is important. So if you add fasting and then you are ministering to the Lord, what begins to happen is that that presence of the Lord that appeared to have disappeared, all of a sudden you see that is coming and what happens is that after that season you find out that you just move to a new spiritual level in your walk with god so many times when you sense that that presence of god is no longer the way you used to experience it don't think that you are backsliding <laughs> okay and what you need to know is that god wants something deeper god wants to take you deeper and that leads me to my final point in that season, you need to be extremely sensitive to the Holy Spirit because he's going to be speaking to you. He's going to be speaking to you. And many times, 
when God wants to actually do things in our lives, we are too much in a hurry. I remember a, a testimony that was shared one time about a guy, this guy was a, a university student and he went into the season of praying in the morning and it was awesome. The presence of God just filled his room. And then he kept checking his time because he had a lecture. And it was one of those lectures who, <laughs> don't try it. If you miss my lecture, unless you tell me you died yesterday, if not. So, was that kind of lecturer. So, after a while, this guy told the Lord, Oh Lord, I have to, I have to go for this lecture. And the Lord said, stay. Stay, I have something I want to do in your life today. So, the guy continued praying. After a while, he checked. When he saw that the Lord wasn't going to release him, and the presence of God was so awesome. He just got up and ran off. As he was going towards the lecture hall, he saw his classmates coming out of the lecture hall. He said, what happened? The lecturer didn't come. He said, no, he sent a message that he wasn't coming. Oh my God, okay, good, let me rush back, let me rush back. And back he went into his room, but the presence of God was gone. It was gone. Let me tell you, this God that we serve eh, actually desires to manifest himself very strongly in your life. Christianity is more than what you have experienced. It's not just about going to church and coming back. It's about having a living, vibrant, functional, working relationship with the God of heaven. And that's where God wants to take you. I pray for you that you will actually move from where you are. Do whatever it will take at this time. Maybe this message is particularly for you and say, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. Yes, do something about it. I pray that the Lord will strengthen you to rise up, to take hold on God, move from where you are now to the next level where God wants you at. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Again, I want to say, share this video. It will be a job, a work you are doing for God. Share this video. If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe. Tell your friends, your family about this channel. Their spiritual lives will be so blessed. Thank you for watching and remember to leave your comments below. God bless you. I'll see you in our next video.